Hi, my name is Shalom Patel. I'm from Duke University and I'm also one of the Grouper developers. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about how to administer the Grouper UI, and this is part two. So here's what I'll be talking about in this part. First, I'll talk about the differences between the light and admin UIs. I'll also talk about how you can customize text in the UI along with various configuration options and other customizations. I'll then talk about browser support, accessibility, and high availability. This is the architecture diagram for Grouper as of version 2.1. The block that is circled is the UI component. As you can see, the UI is one of many components included in Grouper that talk to Grouper using Grouper's Java API. The Grouper UI consists of an admin UI along with a light UI. Both of these are within the same package and deployed together. There is some functionality that's available in both of these UIs, but then there's also some functionality that's only available in one of these. For instance, the admin UI allows you to navigate the folder hierarchy in Grouper. It also allows you to create folders. You can also move and copy groups and folders from one folder to another. And you can manage the old method of dealing with attributes in Grouper that just allow attributes uh, to be assigned to groups. The admin UI has been around since the early releases of Grouper. The light UI, on the other hand, is much newer and has been getting a lot of the more recent Grouper features. The light UI allows you to add start and end dates on memberships and attribute assignments. You can also manage permissions. You can manage the newer method of dealing with attributes in Grouper that allows you to assign attributes to groups, folders, memberships, and many other objects in Grouper. There are also other parts of the light UI that allow you to deal with external subjects by sending them invitations and allowing them to register. And then there is also a subject picker that you can use to integrate with other applications. As far as common functionality, both of these UIs allow you to create groups, add memberships to groups, and add privileges to groups to determine who can view, read, update, and administer those groups. And they both allow you to export memberships to a file and then also import memberships from a file. The admin UI was the first UI that was built. It was based on the structs framework. The light UI, on the other hand, is an Ajax-based um, UI. It was created after we had early reports of users having difficulty using the admin UI because of usability issues. So there is more focus on making it more user-friendly. Here's a screenshot of the admin UI. Um, here you can browse the hierarchy in Grouper and the screenshot shows you the groups that are under the test folder. This is a screenshot of the light UI, um, and this is the membership update page. One of the user-friendly features of the light UI is that when you start typing words in many of the search boxes in the UI, um, you'll start getting entries as you type um, so you can see um, what search results match um, very quickly. And um, you can also see that in this screenshot. Both the admin and light UIs allow you to customize the text that is displayed on the screen. There's a nav.properties file that contains all the text. For instance, if you want to change the label that's next to a button, or the button text itself, or maybe a tooltip, you can just adjust the text in the nav.properties file. If you want to display all the text in another language, that's also possible because of this. However, because there are more than 2,000 lines of text in this file, translating to another language is not very easy, but it is possible and has been done by other deployers. Now I'll talk about other various configuration and customization options. This only covers a small number of what you might want to customize. Uh, for more information, you should take a look at the Grouper Wiki First off, configuration options are largely in the media.properties file. 
You can take a look at this file along with the documentation on the wiki to see what options exist. If you're looking to customize authentication, uh, for instance, if you want to use Shibboleth, Kerberos, or LDAP, uh, take a look at the first part of this tutorial. So then moving on, using the media.properties file, you can easily add your own custom style sheets. You can do this by setting a value for the CSS.additional property. Your CSS will add and override the CSS that's delivered by Grouper. You can also disable Grouper's default style sheet um, if you want. The UI properties allow you to update a couple of the logos as well um, that are included. Since the admin UI allows you to navigate the entire hierarchy of Grouper, you can specify the top node uh, in the hierarchy uh, if you want to limit the browsing that users can do to a subset of the hierarchy. If you want to enable membership export and import in the admin UI, you can uncomment uh, the two lines shown here um, in the configuration. The light UI allows um, membership export and import by default. Um, and as far as these two XML files, um, you'll probably need to modify those as well uh, to include the subject source names that you're using. With the light UI, you can customize on a per application basis as well. Uh, so the use case here would be if you have a separate application and one functionality of this application is to allow users of that application to modify the members of a particular group. Um, you may want to allow the membership update screen that's shown to users to have the same look and feel as um, that application. And you may want the text on that membership update screen to be based on the particular application as well. You can write your own membership update screen that talks to uh, Grouper using web services, or you can use Grouper's membership update UI with an application-specific customization. The membership light UI allows you to specify a membership light name parameter as part of the URL. The parameter value is tied to CSX and text configuration that's specific to that application. The configuration can be deployed alongside the Grouper UI, or it can be an external um, based URL as well. Uh, so you can, so this allows you to easily customize uh, the membership like UI for multiple applications. The Grouper API configuration allows you to store multiple sort strings for subjects in the Grouper database. This is useful if you want to allow end users to sort membership lists based on multiple subject attributes. For the UI, in the nav.properties file, you can specify the labels to add for each sort string. So by default, the UI assumes that the first sort string is the subject's name and the second sort string is the subject's login ID. End users would see a drop-down box that allows them to change the attribute to sort by. You can also set the member.sort.default only property to true in the media.properties file to avoid showing end users a drop-down and instead using the default sort as configured in the API configuration. You may also want to change how subjects are displayed, uh, for instance, in membership lists. By default, the Grouper UI will display the description of the subject as configured in the sources.xml file. If the description of the subject is just the subject's name, uh, but you also want to display the subject's ID or some other attribute, that's possible in the UI. In the admin UI, you can do this by editing the subjectview.jsp file. In the light UI, this is easier since you just have to update a few properties in the media.properties file. You'd want to be sure that the source ID is set to the correct identifier that you're using. Then you can specify an expression language for how the subject is displayed. In this example, it's a subject's description followed by a space and the subject's ID in parentheses. The browser support for both the admin and light UIs are fairly basic. We require XHTML 
um, 1.0 and CSS 2.1. Cookies must be enabled along with JavaScript. And finally, Ajax is necessary especially for the light UI uh, since that's completely based on Ajax. Some of the earlier releases of the admin UI were very accessible, but since then we've lost some of the focus on accessibility. As of Grouper 2.1, there are many known issues with accessibility in both the admin and light UIs, although the admin UI is probably more accessible. As part of the Grouper UI rewrite um, post Grouper 2.1, accessibility will get more focus again. To deploy the Grouper UI in high availability, uh, you'd want to have two or more servers running the Grouper UI uh, in Tomcat, for instance. You can set up load balancing between the servers, uh, which should be okay as long as you have persistence set up. So after a user makes the first request to a backend server through the load balancer, you'd want to make sure that all further requests uh, by that user continue to go to the same backend server. So that's all for this tutorial. Um, click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. And here are some links you can visit for more information. And the next video in the Grouper Online Training for Administrators is Grouper Web Services Part 1. Thanks.